is Trek for 12 Health and Fitness Certified Personal Trainer. Welcome back to the channel. It's body weight only. Today we're targeting our legs. All right, everyone, like I said, today is body weight only and we are gonna be targeting our legs. But before we get there, I have one little thing to share with you and that is to follow me and subscribe for more content. Share this with your friends and family. We greatly appreciate it. Now that's out of the way, let's get straight into this and the first exercise that we'll be looking at is of course, the body weight squat. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the squat here. However, we're doing this with body weight only. We're not gonna have a bar on our back or any dumbbells beside us or anything like that. So the positioning of the squat that we're going to want to get into is we're going to want to make sure that our feet are just outside of shoulder width apart. We're going to want to make sure our toes are slightly pointed outwards or directly in front of us. And the reason we do this is just because it puts our pelvis in the correct position. I like to have my toes slightly outward. Uh, it's a little bit more comfortable for me in my pelvis. So when I squat down, I put my hands underneath my chin. And the reason for this is because it helps me align my spine and make sure that I don't go too far forward because underneath my chin, you can see here from the side, my elbows come almost right to my knees and that just feels really comfortable and my whole body is in line. Shoulders, knees, and heels are all in line there. Now the reason why you want to be in a line like this is because if you're too far forward, you're gonna fall over. If you're too far backwards, you're gonna fall over backwards. And it really puts stress on the joints if you're out of position here. Especially if you're carrying lots of weight, if you are incorporating this into a barbell or dumbbells or any type of weight that you're using in your household, such as a big bag of rice on your shoulder or a milk jug in your hand or whatever it is, as soon as you start adding weight to it, it's gonna put you off balance and that's where we end up with injuries. So again, I will show you, when I come down in the squat here, my hand is underneath my chin. Uh, it just puts me in that position, like I said, where my elbows can come down and just make contact with my knees or just before making contact with my knees. I wanna feel like I am simulating if I was sitting down on a toilet. So I'm gonna lead with my pelvis first, pushing backwards, and then I'm gonna drop down with my elbows and try and get to my knees. I don't want my knees to come way past my toes. It's okay if it passes your toes a little bit, that is all right. And we wanna make sure that our knees are actually following our toes. We don't wanna have our knees coming inwards and we don't wanna have them going way outside of our toe range. This may feel awkward at first, and if you've never squatted before, or if you don't feel comfortable squatting, put a bench or a chair behind you. So if you do fall backwards, you're gonna fall into the chair. This will build up your confidence as well as your leg muscles. So then once you are ready, you can move that chair out of the way. You'll be able to support your own body weight and complete the exercise correctly. All right, so exercise number two on the list is going to be the three-way single leg RDL. Now, why is it called a three-way single leg RDL? It's because we're gonna be doing this on one leg at a time. Then we'll rotate to the next leg. And the reason why it is a three-way is because there's three directions that we're going to be moving. Our body is going to be moving forward, to the right, and to the left. So as you can see here, I am using my other leg, which I am not working on. That leg is gonna be the counterbalance to the front of my body because I'm gonna be leaning over. This is what we're really working on because when we bend over, we're gonna be using our glutes to push our body back up into the upright position. And we need that counterbalance because the front of our body is going to then wanna fall over and hit our face on the ground. However, if our leg is now behind us, it is acting as a counterbalance to our body and we're gonna bend down and try and touch our toes. If you can't touch your toe, that is okay. This is gonna build up a lot of core and stability work throughout your glutes. And when we lean forward, our leg goes behind us. And then we're gonna to lean to the right, and then our leg is gonna kick out to the left to counterbalance because our body's going to the right. And then the next one is we're gonna be leaning inward towards the left now, and our leg is gonna come behind us and kick out to the right. And this is gonna act as our counterbalance, like I said, so we don't fall over. This will take some time to get used to, so you're probably gonna to have to kinda of tippy toe your foot across the ground every now and then just to catch your balance, and that is okay. Once you get stronger, you will no longer need to do that. And here's another angle from the other view. As you can see, I am leaning forward, and this time my other leg is now acting as my counterbalance. And then once I finish my forward motions, I will then come inside and do it. And my leg will go behind me and act as my counterbalance behind my other leg. And then again, on the other side, it's gonna just swing out to the side and make sure that I don't fall over. All right guys, that's the three-way single leg RDL. Probably one of my favorite single leg exercises. And we are on to the next exercise, which is going to be the three-way lunge. 
And again, why is it called the three-way lunge? Because we're moving in three directions yet again. This time we're gonna be moving straight, we're gonna be moving off to our side, and then we're gonna pivot on our ankle here, and we're gonna move backwards and do a lunge backward, which is a little awkward for some, but it's gonna really work our pelvis and again, our glutes, making sure that everything is working in synergy, just in case we do need to make that quick pivot movement, then we can do that. So I'm gonna be first stepping forward and then coming back up to the upright position. When I step forward, I wanna make sure that I take a giant leap forward, I reach down and try and touch my ankles, which is then going to make my opposite leg, whichever leg that I'm not leaping forward with, just drop straight down to the ground. And when I do this, I wanna make sure that I do not bounce my knee off the ground because that's going to hurt. So I take a giant step forward, I drop the opposite knee to the ground, which is gonna cause my front leg to bend into that 90 degree position. If my knee is crossing way past my toes, I'm not taking a big enough step forward. So just address that. All right, so off to the side. It's exactly the same thing as going forward. However, I go off to the side, and this time I'm now moving it over top of my right leg, going down, trying to touch my ankle, and then I am pressing up through the heel and extending that hip forward, which is gonna bring me straight back up to the upright position. And then I'm going to repeat that again and again. Now for the third way of the lunge here, it's gonna be that pivot one like I was talking about. So I'm going to get in the exact same position as I did before. As you can see here, I wanna pivot. So I'm gonna be pivoting on my heel on one foot and then leaping and grabbing my ankle on the other foot. When I do this, I wanna make sure that I am pressing through my heel in order to get back up to the top. So I'm pressing through my heel, which is gonna activate my hamstrings and I wanna make sure that I flex my glutes at the top here so then I can get that hip extension forward. Here it is from another angle. So as soon as I come forward, I bend down, I wanna try and touch my ankles and I wanna make sure that my other knee is not touching the ground but it's coming close and the knee that I am working is not going past my toes. And then here it is from the side angle. I'm leaping out to the side, trying to touch my ankle and then again driving through the heel to get back up to the top position. And then here's an opposite angle of the pivot that I was talking about for the three-way. You're just, you're spinning and pivoting, trying to get to your heel. And again, pushing all your pressure through your heel to propel your body back up to that top position. All right, we're on to exercise number four now, which is gonna be calf raises. If you don't know what a calf raise is, well, it's a very easy and simple exercise. All you do is you just get up on the balls of your feet by lifting your heels off of the ground, which will propel your body into the air, and then you go back down. It's a very easy exercise to do. So as you can see here, I'm using a step. If you don't have a step, that is okay. You can just do it flat on the ground, that's no problem. What you want to do is want to make sure that your balls of your feet are on an object or on the ground, and what we're going to do is just raise our heels off the ground. It's as easy as that. We're not gonna to wanna to bounce, okay? So as, as you do your exercise, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stop at the top and give it a peak contraction, and then come back down to the ground or just past if you're using an object, and then pause for one second. Don't bounce up from that bottom position and then bounce off the top. So we always wanna make sure that we pause for at least a second on the top position and the bottom position just to get those peak contractions and that peak stretch in there. Now a good way to train your calves is if you have a set of stairs in your house, you do one step and then you do a calf raise and then on the next step you do two calf raises and you continue on up the ladder until you hit the top of your steps. So if you have a set of like 10 steps, you're doing like 55 calf raises. And that's a good way to train your calf muscle and all you have to do is one or two sets up and down the stairs, you're done. So the last exercise I wanna talk about is going to be a isometric style of exercise. We're gonna be in this frog stance position. So we're gonna be hunched down, squatted over like this. We're gonna drive into our knees with our elbows and we're gonna press in with our knees into our elbows. So we have those two opposing forces hitting each other. This is really gonna build up some lactic acid in our hamstrings and that is exactly what we're going for. And then all I'm going to do is just bob up and down. I'm gonna be making sure that my butt or glutes come close to the ground as close as possible and then I'm just going to extend all the way up with my hamstrings and try and get my glutes or butt to the ceiling. And I'm gonna be doing this bobbing up and down for as long as I possibly can. You're really gonna feel that lactic acid burn up. That is good. We want that to happen and I want you guys to try and hold it for as long as possible. And that's pretty much it for the frog stance. 
It is a very good finishing exercise to do at the end of your leg day. If you don't believe me, just try it. All right, that is it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe for more content, and share this with your friends and family. It would be greatly appreciated. And remember to give it your maximum effort, because you're stronger than you think. Let's see how long you can hold that frog stance for. I'll see you in the next one.